I started recording. See, see you, lo you missed your opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. No, look, they'll, they'll be, see, there'll be plenty of time for swearing later. <laughs> anyway, um, folks, today, uh, this is for folks who want to create a quiz from scratch. And we use the term quiz simply because that's what Moodle calls it. But you can have, this could be your final exam. This could be anything you need where you want to give students questions. And there's a few reasons to do it. One of them, Jonah and I were just talking about there, you can have each student have sort of a different look when they, when they take their quiz or whatever you want to call it. Maybe you have uh, random questions that way the students can't share. Now I think that's uh, I think we're pretty much uh, you know free from students doing that, but they always can you know somehow share. But uh, I'm pretty sure that it's a little harder right now. But either way, we'll go over it. Um, quizzes are confusing, and what I've done is I've broken them into four separate sections and hopefully if we look at each section as one task it'll be a lot easier the other thing with the quiz you really can't break anything if you make a huge mess and it's all over the place just delete that quiz and start again honestly you can't destroy anything even if you have terrible questions you can you can get rid of them or, or edit them so please don't worry if you do this and about an hour into it you think you made a disaster don't worry contact us drop us a help desk ticket we can help so please, uh, you know, you, use our use our uh, uh, use support if if you do need it. So there's one more thing. If you're looking to import questions from a publisher, and many textbooks now have that, a lot of what we're doing here is required. So even if you're not going to make up your own questions, a lot of this is necessary. The the concern I have is each publisher has a different way that they require us to, to get their questions and put them into Moodle. And some don't even offer questions for Moodle and we have to finagle how to get it in there. So if you're having trouble with the instructions they give you, and our experience is that some publishers do this really well and they care and they help and others are less helpful, uh, please contact us if you if you get stumped. We still may not be able to do it. We've actually encountered that, but we can at least make sure we, you know, we give it a good shot. So it's a bit problematic at times, but contact us if you need any help with importing questions from your publisher. And of course, there's no polite way in a Zoom session to interrupt. So please just stop me anytime and ask your question. I promise you I won't be offended. Okay. So here's what we're going to do today. And let me open my course. This is my fake course with fake students. And we're going to create quizzes. And here are the four things we need to do. The first thing we do is create a category. And that category is where we're going to put the questions, which is the second thing we're going to do. We're going to create the questions. Then we're going to create a quiz. And this is a shell, which means it's just blank. There's nothing in it. And then we're going to throw the questions into that shell, and then we have a quiz. So it's one, two, three, four. And if we do it in that order, it's been my experience that uh, it's the easiest way to do it. You can sh shuffle that order, and some people do, but I had to come up with a way that I thought was the simplest and best, so that's what I, that's what I did. So if you want to follow along in your class, by all means, but like I said, this will be recorded, so you can always catch it later if you just want to watch. So the first thing we do is we're going to go to the administration block. And all of you have that. It's defaulted into your course. Mine is up here on the left because I have it docked, which is this little, little I guess, uh, chevron here. If I don't do that, it shows up over here. But I like it over here. I'm used to it. And we're going to go down to question bank. And we're going to create, I didn't mean to do that. We're going to create a category. Let me go right here. Now, I already have some categories made. If you have any quizzes, you're going to see those too. And the reason why Moodle shows you every category for courses is because maybe you have questions in a different course and you want to use them in this one. This lets you do it. So even though it can be a mess, if you have a lot of questions, it does give you the flexibility to do that. You can see I made a fake quiz here already, and there are six questions in there. And I'm going to make another category right now, and it's very simple. This is the default, is the name of my course, Horner Quiz Temp Course. And I'm just going to give it a name. I'm going to call it uh, New Quiz. And I'm going to spell it right, too. There. Don't worry about any of this stuff. Category info, number, we don't care about any of that stuff. Generally speaking, the defaults for most of what we're going to do, except where I point out, are probably fine. And you can always change them later if you like. So you'll see now I have a new quiz in my course. Here's the course, Horner quiz temp course and there's no questions in it so now we're going to do the second thing we talked about we're going to create questions and we're going to go up to the administration block again 
And now we're going to go to questions. Pretty self-explanatory so far. You can see I've already have a few questions here because, like I said, I made a fake, a fake quiz. But let's talk about the ones we're going to use. Here is where we start. All the good things start with create a new question. We click on that, and you'll see all of these choices. You can use any of these, but the most common ones are multiple choice, of course. And then we also have essays, which we'll talk about in a second, and short answer, although that can be problematic, so I want to I go over that with you. True, false is simple to use as well, but once you know the basic idea, you can pick any of these if you want. The calculated stuff is, Joan, you understand that, and I don't, but... Let's just leave that alone. So let's start with multiple choice. And oh, by the way, you can see when I click on something, it explains it a little bit in case you don't know. So let's go with multiple choice. I'm going to make our question here. Now, question name, the students will not see that. So you want to give yourself something that you will identify when you look at the question list, because that is what you're going to see. Now, I've already taken the liberty of coming up with these questions and answers on a little uh, text an open text box here just so you don't have to see my horrible typing. So I'm just going to copy and paste them in here. So here's my first question. And the first question is, who was the vice president under FDR in 1945? You can see my question name tells me pretty much that. Now, Harry Truman. Oh, you know, uh, there's always one. <laughs> anyway. I didn't Joan, swear. <laughs> that's right, not yet. Joan, here's a, this may help you too. Shuffle the choices is defaulted. So that means if I give choice one, choice two, and three, the students will not see them in the same order every time. So this is defaulted, and this is great except for one problem. If you're going to say something like uh, both A and D or all of the above, you can't do that in this question if you shuffle the choices. You have to unclick shuffle the choices to do that because A and B is going to change or all of the above is going to change. Your, your first answer might be all of the above, and that makes no sense. So this is defaulted because most people need it, but if you want to do that, you have to uncheck it. No big deal. So let's go to our answers here. And the first one, as Steve ruined it already, is Harry Truman. Man, whatever. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> and Feedback is kind of interesting because this is where you can actually just have the system tell the students, hey, that's correct. Now, they're going to know it anyway. You could also write something there, too, if you want. Um, feedback isn't so helpful when someone's correct because if they got it right, they probably know it's correct. But let's take choice number two, and we're going to put this in. Now, that's clearly wrong because, copy, when the student sees their answer, they're going to see what the correct answer is. Now, you can put anything you want here. You don't have to write anything. Some people don't, and that's perfectly fine, too. And let's just put one more answer. Let's see if anyone gets who this was. Alan Sherman. Oh, that I should have put down. Anyone know who Gordon Shumway is? If someone puts no. this down, they, they should be thrown out of the class. Gordon Shumway was the name of Alf on the TV show, in the 80s TV show. The re I mean, the, the fictitious puppet. Its name was Gordon Shumway. So right now, I have three question, three answers. One of them is correct. How do I tell the system which one's correct? Well, if you get these two, they're wrong. So just leave none. None is the default. The correct one gets 100% credit. Now, this is cool because let's say you want to have a question that says, which two answers are correct for this question? Students have to get both. You would then set each to get 50%. So if they got one right, they get 50% of the points. If they get both right, they get two. If they get none right, they get zero. So this is pretty flexible and powerful. If you're mean, you can also take off points. And maybe you don't have to be mean. Maybe you want to encourage students, if they don't know, to not answer. I think some like standardized tests do that. Um, I'm not that smart. I don't know why you would do that. But if you want to do it, you can do it. So right here, I can add more choices if I want, more than five. I can do whatever. I'm not going to worry about this, although I Again, let's not worry about that. We're going to um, save the changes. And now I have created a new question called, right there, it's in green. That's the latest one that I just did. It's now in my question bank here. And you'll see in my fake, oh, wait, where is it? I, oh, I put it in the wrong category, didn't I? I wanted to put it in fake quiz. Let me make sure I did that right. Look, I put it in the wrong category here. Let me click this off. It's cool, I made a mistake, because now I can show you what I did. I wanted to put it in new quiz. If you make that mistake, just unclick this, 
go down and save it, and then you'll see that it's all by itself in the new quiz category. That was actually cool. I made that, you know, I did that on purpose to show you how to get out of a mistake that you made. So those are multiple choice. Um, it has been my experience with coming up with questions that 90% of the work for a quiz is coming up with the questions and the rest of it is just setting up the quiz, which is fairly straightforward. This is where you'd probably spend a lot of your time. Let's do an essay question. I'm going to create a new question. All the, everything starts here, create a new question and I'm going to pick essay. And you're going to notice we have a lot fewer choices now. I'm going to give it a name, copy, Again, this is just for me. Students will not see it. And here is my question, copy. I'm asking the students to write and they're gonna write in a text box. And I'm not gonna worry about any of this other stuff. I certainly can. If I wanna make it bigger, I can give them more. This should be plenty because if you note, I said 250 words, that should be plenty. And I save the change. And now I have another question right here. And if you look at these icons, this looks like an essay page and this looks like multiple choice. You can tell right by looking at them what it is. Later, I wanna show you how this looks to a student and when you grade it, but here's the important point. Multiple choice questions are graded automatically. When the student is done with the quiz or when you want them to, which I'll show you, it automatically will give them the grade because it knows which ones they got right and wrong. With an essay, you have to grade it. So the students will not get their grade or the essay or anything returned until you manually do it. So that's the biggest thing. You have to remember to go back and grade it uh, either at or before when you say you're gonna give the, the uh, quiz back to students or whenever, whenever you decide to do it. Um, and that's a key difference. A lot of people like just multiple choice because it kind of takes care of itself. Okay, the other one I wanna show you, and again, create new question, is short answer. And a lot of folks use this and we have trouble and they have trouble because we have to be extremely careful. So I'm gonna give myself the, the, the name, the question name as USS Maine. I'm gonna paste it. And here's my question. You could probably guess the question if you're a history nerd. And of course, the sinking of the Maine preceded the Spanish-American War. But here's the problem, you'll see that the answers, I have to say what answers I'm accepting. So for example, main, I'll take, copy, paste. All right, I'll take that. I'll also take the USS main. And you can see the problem already developing. I'll also take the main. Pretty cool. And I gotta make sure that I have, I give these all credit, 100%, 100%, 100%. So if a student answers Maine, USS Maine, or the Maine, they get 100%, but here's the problem. If someone writes uh, the battleship Maine or something like that, they get zero points. So I would caution you if you want to use a uh, short answer, if it's a one word answer, that's when it is helpful. And maybe you even need to say spelling counts or something like that. Maybe if you have a, a, a calculation and it comes up with a number, the number is 42, just like the Hitchhiker's Guide. As long as you have a simple answer, short answer works. If you have it like this, where it could be many different answers, we, it may not work. And you may get a, an email from a student saying, but I put this, and then you have to manually go and change it. So again, hey, multiple, oh, yes, please. Hey, sorry to interrupt, this is Amanda. Hey, Amanda. Hey, um, so is there a way to do the short answers so that you can go back in and grade them like an essay and avoid that whole scenario? Uh, you could if you purposely only put, if you didn't put, well, I guess you'd have to put one answer down at least, but you may have to go anyway, uh, just to make sure that someone didn't write something that was correct, but not what you thought. Um, so I guess what I would do is I would put some answers down anyway, but before the quiz is released, before the grade is released, I'd probably go in myself and just verify that question. Um, that would you prob could probably be the actually, best way to do it. You could also frame it like an essay and just have it be very short, right? Like 20 word answer. That might actually be the better way to do it because they know that they have to write it and you know it's not gonna be exactly one of those answers. It just doesn't have to be one of those. That may be a better idea. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah, the reason I bring up the reason I even showed you short answer is because it seems wonderful. Hey, this is so great. I don't necessarily like multiple choice all the time. Let's mix it up, but it is problematic. So I wanted to cover it, but yeah, that's a good way around it. I think. And here's the other thing. Look in my question bank. I have three different types of quizzes. I have a short answer, an essay and a multiple choice. You can do anything you want. You can jumble them up and mix them up any way that you want. But if you have any of these ones that you have to go into, like, like a essay, the students will not be able to get their grade until you do that. That's just a minor point, but um, that is important. Okay. Now, um, let's, uh, let me go down here and get where I am. Now we're going to create the quiz. We already have our three question quiz bank. We probably want a lot more, but let's just use three. Now we create the quiz. This is step three in what we are doing. So we're going to now go up to our class or over to our class. And here's where all good things start. Turn editing on. Now we have the ability to add an activity. You probably have on your page, add a resource or activity. No one's been able to figure out why mine is separate. I think it's defaulted from something years ago. I'd have no idea, but you'll probably have these together, but who cares? Let's go down to quiz. Now here is where we set up the actual shell. The questions are not in yet, and this is like our framework. So I'm just going to say new quiz one. I made that up. I'm not going to worry about description. I am going to expand all these choices because these are important. Just like with an assignment, I can say when it opens or closes. I can set a time limit if I want. Please don't touch this when time expires because if a student is taking the quiz and they're taking too much time, it's going to tell them your time is almost up. It tells them several times. And if they don't submit, once it shuts it down on them, all their answers that they did submit do come in. Sometimes students will say, I was working on the quiz and I didn't realize it was closing and it didn't take any of my questions. To be pleasant about it or kind about it, that can't happen. So try to leave this the same. No, no try, definitely leave it the same. We also recommend that every question has its own page. You can say how many questions you want on a page, but what happens is, let's say you choose every six questions. The questions are not saved until the student does the sixth one and then click save. So if for some reason it ends or they lose internet or any myriad of problems, we like to say every question's on its own page because that way every time they say go to the next page, it saves that question. And again, it's defaulted, so don't worry. And Joan, I think you brought this up too here. You can also shuffle the answers. Oh, uh, my cat is just walking on my keyboard. Hold, excuse me. Come on, Fez, hit the road. There we go. Um, I know, th that's what happens when we're working from home. Um, oh, this is, I'm sorry. I think this is the same, no, this is different. Ignore me, okay. This is important. And this, you'll have to decide how you want the students to get the results of their quiz. If you look at the default here, everything's checked pretty much that after the attempt, which means when they say, I'm done, I'm closing, they can see everything, your feedback, your points, they can see their quiz. If you don't want them to see it until the quiz is closed, which I think many people will, um, and this means, of course, they've submitted the quiz, but the time period is still open. Maybe it's you know, two days from now at noon, it closes. You might want to say you can't look at it. Maybe you want them to see the points. That's cool. You can get rid of that too. But you may want to not let the students see how they did until everyone has submitted it. Completely up to you, but it's simple. I would just click here and click here. Maybe I even want to see the points. I don't see anything. Nothing. Only after the quiz, they will see everything. And obviously this is defaulted. You can't stop them from seeing it when it's closed. So your call, you decide what you want, but this is an area that you have to decide how you want it to look. My personal preference is I don't want them seeing how they did until everyone has submitted the quiz. Again, just me. Hey, John. Yes. John. Yes. Can you go, go uh, scroll back up just very quickly? Uh, the scrambling, shuffling within the questions. Yes. Um, so that, okay, with, when, when you were doing the multiple choice question, I saw yeah. that you could shuffle the, the choices, A, B, C, D. Um, wait, okay, so here, the shuffle within questions, does that it's mean- the answers. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, these are the okay. answers. Yeah, I think I was unclear. 
these, I think I screwed up is what I did. These are the answers within the questions. Remember I said both A and B? The other example, okay. I believe, I think, I'm not sure. I have to check. I think it almost seems like these are the same things now that I'm looking at it. Yeah, they are. Okay. They are the same thing. Um, I'll just put yes. Who knows? Um, I can do a quick test. I'll do a quick test and find out. I have all your names. I can email you. But um, you can also look, too, when you preview the quiz. You can see as well. But um, yeah, this confused me a bit. I'm not sure if I, uh, if I got that right. So let me, look that, let me look that up, but I will. Okay, okay thanks. No, no, Joan, you're 100% right. So I'm going to return. Oop, save and display. I'm going to look at it now. Um, I have, uh, I'm going to edit the quiz. I've created the quiz now. Let me go to the page. Where did I put it? I think I put it up top. Here's the new quiz. I'm going to move it down here just so I can see it. There's nothing in the quiz. If the student clicks on it, they'll see there's nothing there, but they do get one attempt. So now we have to put the questions in the quiz, and this is where everything comes together. So I'm going to click on new quiz. I'm going to edit the quiz. Now you can see this is where, and this is hidden. Add is kind of just over here. It's a little weird to see, but here is where you do anything. I can set the grade. I can add grades to each question. They could have different grades if they want. I'm going to say, um, if I say a new question, it lets me write a new question. But remember, the way we did it here is we put the questions in the question bank. I believe that makes it easier for you to, to keep things straight. Now, uh -huh. these are all the questions I have, but I'm going to just use the one that I just made in my new quiz. And this is where you decide where you want to go. This box here lets me choose all of them. And then uh -huh. easy, add to the quiz. Now I have a three quiz, three question quiz. If I save, and by the way, maybe I want this. Where's the essay? Here's the essay. Maybe I want the essay to be double the points of the other ones. Whoop, I screwed that up. Double. There we go. I had to hit the enter key. I think I did that wrong. You can do whatever you want. My maximum grade is 10. Even though total points are four, Moodle still converts it to whatever grade I want. I generally have hundreds for everything because I think students understand that, but you decide. I click save and I magically have a lovely quiz. It's lame and it's brief, but it works. Let me log in as a student, a fake student. Uh, let me. I have the ability to do this, so let me let me do this. I'm going to log in as a fake student to see what they see. Okay. So this student now knows he has to take the quiz. He clicks on it. He says, "I have one shot to do it." And again, you decide in the settings how many times you want them to do it. You can also set a time between tries if you want. So here they type what they want. They're done. They go to the next page. They click on this. They go to the next page. And look here, they can see where they're going. Notice every time I click on a page, it goes to the next page. I'm going to say the main ship. Now I'm done. I have to decide, do I want to go back? Do I want to look? This tells me the questions I've taken. If I want to go back to one, I just click on one. But I'm done. I'm going to submit and look, it asks you again, are you sure? So if students tell you that, and now I get the feedback and look, this said it's wrong, but it really is right. This is why short answers are kind of weird, but this uh, has to be, uh, has to be graded. Now, please remember, I said the students can't, I use the defaults. The students can see everything as soon as they submit. You may not want to do that. So now let me get out of here. Log out. Now, um, I could see the student, if I click on attempts, I could see what the student did. And remember the essay question, I have to grade, I have to click here to be able to grade it. Oh, I think I clicked the wrong one, hold on. Where is it? Requires grading, excuse me. I hit the wrong one. Now, I can look at it here and I can decide what grade they get, stuff like that. Okay, I can make comments, override, give grades, stuff like that. Okay, um, one more thing. I'd like to show you how it looks if we have a number of submissions. I, put, I made this fake quiz earlier. Um, I just got something, folks, here. I don't know if you know this. I just got a notice that students have to leave campus. 
Did anyone catch that too? They're not allowed to stay on campus, I guess. That just came through. It's kind of kind of scary. So anyway, here are the attempts in my history Thank quiz. You. Did anyone else get that? I just I just I got think that. We uh, just here. made the decision that we're not coming back in April. Yeah, I think that's exactly what that means. To be honest, I kind of thought that, but this I think proves it. All right, well, that's our world right now. So anyway, here's like I said, it looks very similar. I had four questions here. I can see the answers, um, and I have to click on this, and then I uh, then this grade here will show up as well once I do once I do that. Okay, I'd like to show you how to do random questions, but are there any questions at this point? Um, like I said, these are the four steps uh, that that should make this work easily. Um, creating the category, then making questions in that category, making the shell of the quiz, and then putting the questions in the quiz. Are there any specific questions at this point before we do random stuff? Okay, very cool. Quizzes can be confusing, but I think if we take each thing individually, it's not so bad. Now you'll notice here, I set up a random question quiz. So I'm gonna click on it, and I'm gonna just edit it so I can show you from the instructor's Whoops, nope, that's not what I'm doing. Let me try this again. Let me edit it. Here we go. Edit. Oh, what am I doing wrong here? I want to see the quiz. Oh, yeah, here it is. Um, attempt the quiz. The students will, every student will get a different one here. Um, and as the instructor, Oh, you know what? No student has taken it. That's why I can't show. That's why I can't show you what they. Oh darn, that's screwed up. But let me show you how to do it. We're going to create another quiz here. Let's just do a quick quiz, and this is going to be for random stuff. I'm not going to worry about any of this other stuff. All this other stuff is fine. Let's just have our shell here called random quiz. I'm going to edit the quiz and now add questions. Well. Right here, and this is hidden again, add is right here, and the add a random question. But I also now have to say how many questions I want from this set that I'm going to choose. I want two questions from the three that I made. So I'm gonna find my new quiz category. You'll see now that I have three questions, I'm gonna take two. These are the ones that it's choosing from. Remember, this is helpful why I gave it a name. And now I'm going to add the random questions, even though it says two. And now everyone just gets two questions of the three. But here's what's also cool. I can also keep adding other questions if I just go to the question bank again. And now I'm going to go to this question bank that I like. I'm going to choose these three. And I'm going to add them. And now these specific ones are asked. And these two random ones are asked. So you can juggle within a class, within a, a quiz, excuse me, um, how you want this to look. The more questions you have in a random pool, the less likely students will share uh, any question. And of course, if you shuffle the answers, it's even more difficult, or it should be. Students are smart though, but we'll see. Folks, that was a quick, a quick how to make a quiz tutorial. Are there any questions that you have? You can at least get started on, on questions if you're you know, not ready for the quiz yet, at least work on the questions. Um, that's something that'll take time, like I said. John, this is uh, Ben Van Dusen. Uh, yes. Curious, do you guys get into importing from Word or Excel formats? You can do that, and let me show you. It's a little, little tough, which is why you may have to drop us a help desk, but let me show you how you do this. In Question bank, we, whoops, one more time. In question bank, we're going to import. Oh, oh my goodness, come on. I think I'm hitting the ally thing here, import. This allows you to w import some things. Um, Aiken format is more general. You can also import a Blackboard quiz. Sometimes your publisher doesn't have uh, Moodle, but they have Blackboard, this can work, but Aiken, uh, is the easiest to do. And then what you do is here's your file, you bring your Word file in there, but I believe it has to be a certain format. Like, let me open up a Word document. Uh, I may be wrong on this, 
it's easy to find online. I can find it. I think you have to say like um, one, and then you put the, the question, and then you have to say like um, A, let me do this. It has to be a certain format. And then it understands it. If you had like an A here and a one here, it, it wouldn't work. So if you want to do that, uh, we can find information on how exactly it should look in Word to make it work. Uh, Mike Barnes, actually, I just helped him with this and I forgot what the exact criteria are. But then when you're done, you just drag the file in here and it should work. So um, if you want to do that, I'll be happy to send you the information on, uh, on how to do it. John, would that include, John, would that include a multiple choice uh, test where we show, say, a, um, a sketch of a beam? Uh, I think you can only put in, you can import the questions in, and then you'd have to go into the actual question. You know, once you're done with it, once you have it imported, then you can add things like a picture. So it wouldn't come over initially, but you could add it later. Okay. So yeah, probably... the, answer, the long answer is yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And again, folks, if, if you're stuck and it's not working, please just give us a, give us a quick help desk ticket and one of us will help you right away because we know that this stuff is becoming, you know, time, time sensitive. We need to get this stuff up. And like I said, I will try to find that information on, um, on how to uh, set up uh, questions if you do them on another piece of paper, a piece of paper, how old am I? Another, uh, you know, document. Anything else folks that we can help you with or? Please, like I said, ask us for help. We're happy to help if you get stuck and uh, good luck to everyone. I, I think this can be powerful if you do it, you know, if, if you take a little time and do it right, it could really be great. Well, thank you folks. I appreciate thank everyone being you. here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thanks, John. John. Okay, take care, everyone. Thank you, John. The best, the best to you. Okay, you bye. Everybody. Bye, bye. Thank you. See ya. How do I? How do I stop this? There we go.